Well, hello guys. Hello. <laughs> this is a bit of a different format for us, but we thought that it could be very helpful just to get in front of the camera and fill you guys in on what has gone on in the last almost six months, I guess? Since almost surgery? A bit less, since my surgery. So um, yeah, we have a lot to share and um, we've been getting quite a lot of questions. And so, yeah, I think we just want to kind of catch you guys up and yeah, just fill you all in. <laughs> first things first, I am doing very well uh, post-surgery. Um, I had my surgery early April, so it is now going to be no November remember. when you yeah. guys get this video. Um, speaking of timeline stuff, uh, we are super close to being up to date. Uh, if, if you guys follow other YouTube channels, you know that uh, most channels are behind about two months. Um, for the first time in our <laughs> YouTube, I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> in our YouTube career, for better or worse, we're we're up to date. So and we got no more content. <laughs> yeah, but I I think it's pretty <clears throat> exciting because that means um, yeah, you guys are getting everything real time and. Um, yeah, that's always fun. It's a little experiment, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it wasn't an intentional. It wasn't intentional, it was just a weird summer. Yeah. It's, weird. it's been a weird year, obviously. It's been, yeah. Because we've been off the boat almost more than we've been on the boat this year, just due to doctors and surgeries and recoveries and all that stuff. So yeah. um, that's part of the reason why we're out of content, I guess. But Yeah, so yeah, um, in the background to all this, I've been physically healing very well. I am doing a hormone treatment, um, and that is because uh, they actually found invasive cancer when they did the mastectomy, so cancer that kind of went from A to B. Um, and even though everything has been removed via mastectomy, I'm still on a hormone treatment just to kind of cross the T's, dot the I's. Sure, it's possible, yeah. uh, Doctors don't like when cancer moves. Um, but it's a five-year course, and so I've done just a very small amount. The good news is I'm tolerating it really, really well, um, which is frankly, I think a little bit unexpected for my age. Um, so that is huge. And I am so grateful because that was really one of my biggest fears, uh, being so young and, you know, basically I'm removing all of my estrogen. So, um, thank God. And thank you for all your support and your prayers, because, um, I think it's, it's pretty miraculous that I'm doing so well. However, there have been a couple things that have kind of lingered um, associated with my health, and that is one of the reasons why we have not made any announcements about our plans. Um, it's because we haven't been able to come up with our plans. So that's another thing I want to make very clear too, is that we haven't actually been hiding anything from you guys, but um, a lot has happened in our personal lives in the last four months. Um, post my surgery that uh, has just been developing and so yeah we finally have enough information now where we've we've made an actual decision about what our plans are and now we can share it but um so I had two potential minor surgeries that um, I needed to take care of uh, one of the minor surgical things has basically been put off or is deemed to be not necessary at this time so I can kind of cross that bridge later when I come to it I can kind of put that on the shelf and then the other one um, I've actually decided to go ahead and book that surgery and it's going to be next Monday and that is a fat grafting procedure um, it's a completely uh, cosmetic procedure that my plastic surgeon um, had planned to do as part of the reconstructive process um, and it's been a really hard decision for me because it is entirely elective um, since it's a cosmetic procedure and with the year we've had uh, you know choosing to go under and go through surgery again was not a decision that I made lightly um, mm -hmm. and Bill knows I'm not a very indecisive person and I have changed my mind on this surgery so many times um, because it is relatively easy surgery very much so compared to the mastectomy for example um, but it's not completely without risks it's, it's still surgery it's still surgery yeah, there's no, be, no sugarcoating it <clears throat> yeah there's gonna be some recovery time the recovery time is one well 
two weeks. I'm planning for one, <laughs> so um, <laughs> bless you. But it's a full like four to six weeks before you're kind of physically all the way back into shape, and which complicates it, our plans going south. Complicates a bit, but... our plans, and also I've I've finally gotten myself back into physical shape. I'm in a workout routine. I have my strength back, and so now to willingly choose to kind of set myself back is not an easy decision. So <clears throat> hopefully I'm making the right choice. Um, with this because yeah as i said it, it is elective so so like i said yeah what does that lead us to okay Plans. let me, let me you want on. me to pause it what do you just want to keep filming you want to make sure that you check the camera it better be on <laughs> so um Okay, so we're getting to plans. So what does this mean? So once I have the surgery done and recovered from, I have one more uh, meeting with my oncologist. If all my numbers look good, then I am free for, we don't know if it's six months or a year. I might have to have follow-up in six months somewhere, but I'm kind of free to travel um, more extensively. Uh, and that leads us almost to our plans, although there's one more thing I want to tell you guys before we talk about plans, um, and that is the other thing that's been uh, kicking around in the background that's made this whole decision about what to do going forward with cruising more complicated is that my younger sister, she is now 39, um, she found a mass in her chest wall about two months ago. Um, so after everything came out with me, she got a mammogram, it came back completely clean. She decided to pursue more testing because of what happened with me, um, which if you guys don't know, they did not catch much of anything really on any of my imaging, MRI, mammogram, or ultrasound. So she did an MRI um, and has the same thing I have. So she will be undergoing a mastectomy uh, and we've been waiting to get that date because it's very important to me that I am able to be with my sister. She was with me uh, when I went through my everything. Um, and so that's been lingering in the background. We just got the date a few days ago and it's gonna be December 20th. So I can actually fly from where we're going to be uh, back uh, in December to be with her. Um, and she's in the same situation I'm in where they have no reason to believe that there's anything invasive based on what they're seeing in the images, but until she undergoes that mastectomy and, is, holiday, and yeah. is cleared, yep. then, you know, we're, we're obviously quite hopeful well, that she's she got it early. So she's yeah. younger than I am. So hopefully no chance for it to move, but... Yeah, so sharing that for a couple, bunch of reasons, just to be transparent about what's going on in my life, and also um, just to use this forum to just remind everybody... Um, get your checks. <laughs> get your checks, and uh, my sister and I have what's called dense breasts, and that doesn't just make it challenging for imaging. It also is uh, correlated with cancer. So um, I think finding out your family history is really important and maybe learning whether you have dense breasts or not might, combination with family history, might make you consider, you know, is a mammogram enough? And like, I'm not being a doctor um, spreading that, but that's just the awareness that I wanna raise based on what happened to us. Um, and so, yeah, get your, do not put it off. Um, so yeah, hopefully my sister caught it in time, which we think she did. So that's that. And now, without further delay. <laughs> <laughs> long story longer. Long story longer. So we have made the decision to... Cross the Pacific. Cross the <laughs> Pacific. Um, so some of you guys might have kind of guessed at that. Um, it's kind of a logical logical next step for, for us yeah, in, yeah. adventures. As logical as setting up an 8,000 mile journey is. Yeah, we kind of feel like there's nowhere else really to go. Um, but it's been how many years since we crossed the Atlantic? I, I think crossed in 2019, so it's been four years since yeah. we crossed an ocean. So it kind of feels like a lifetime ago that we last crossed an ocean. Um, and yeah, there was a, you know, initially after my surgery, I definitely grappled with whether I actually even wanted to cross an ocean anytime soon. Um, and I had a very seismic shift mentally at some point in the last four or five months where I went from being like, do I want to spend my time, like kind of looking at my time a little differently, like, do I really want to spend all this time on the, on the ocean, like crossing the ocean? Cause it's, it's challenging, um, to say the least, 
but I sort of did a mental 180 and I'm kind of just like, yeah, I think that this experience this year has almost fueled my passion more for getting out there and Adventuring, working yeah. to achieve our goals. Um, and yeah. Um, YOLO. <laughs> yeah, it's YOLO. <laughs> yeah, definitely YOLO. Uh, Don't have the exact plan yet, but the immediate plan is to head south. So yeah, there's... we'll probably cross from Puerto Vallarta area yes. or Barrio Navidad. Like kind of the we're gonna go to wherever the traditional crossing point is. Yeah. So a lot of people um, leave from Puerto Vallarta or even further south. So our game plan in for the next month is going to be to leave Penasco and do it's almost a thousand miles, like 800 or so, about yeah. eight hundred miles from Penasco to Puerto Vallarta, get ourselves in the right trajectory to be on a good um, heading to cross the ocean. Um, we have friends over there, Brooke and Gary at Brian Casa. Uh, so we have a lot of intel from them. It's If you guys follow them, you know that the weather patterns last year were not. Yeah, it's also an El Nino year again this year, so that yeah. will impact us a bit. But I think it basically leads to leaving a little bit later for the trade to establish. So I think we're looking at a March or April time frame for crossing. So we yeah. have a good five months to get the boat shaken down. Any yeah. last minute adjustments we need to make to her. But, you know, hopefully everything will be running smoothly by Tommy Cross. Yeah, the next stage for us in terms of the boat is getting her into perfect ocean crossing shape, which um, there's some things that you do to prepare for an ocean crossing that you wouldn't do otherwise, such as a life raft. A new life um, raft, yeah. We have a new mainsail. And then we have a new, yeah, new mainsail coming. That's uh, coming. Some engine work I want to do. Um, yeah. some, some things I need to fix out of the refit that we found you know, using the boat. Yeah. Uh, some new alternators are gone. So there's some things that need to be done. Yeah. yeah, just that we need to get done. But a lot the the bones are good, and I think you know a lot of systems we added are good. So it's just uh, finalizing it all. It's weird. I think I have more anxiety this one than my other two ocean crossings. I think I think we, I didn't know what I didn't know at that point <laughs> when I crossed. We just kind of went across the Atlantic, very young on our cruising, and I think this one I feel a lot more responsibility and a lot more standards for it to go well and be prepared properly. Uh, just because after all these years of doing it, <clears throat> yeah. so and it's, it's a bigger ocean when you cross to Europe. You're in a civilization again where you can get any parts that break within yeah. 17 days. But you know you. 18 days you arrive in our cases, it's a lot harder to get parts there. It's still in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> I think it'd be more prepared for the Pacific crossing. So that'll be my time and we'll be spent doing that the next several months. Yeah, I think that this will be quite different than our Atlanta crossing. Yeah, I think in so. A in a lot ways. of different ways, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we don't actually know, you know, how long we're gonna spend there. I think we're gonna definitely go for the long stay visa to give ourselves flexibility for anybody that doesn't know. Um, American citizens uh, can't just stay in French Polynesia indefinitely. I think yeah, it's, it's three, three months. months. Yep. So we are having to deal with that. And FP um, is not just a small place, you know, it encompasses a lot of the island groups that you would want to spend a little more time in, uh, like the Tumotos and Bora Bora and that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll probably, yeah, we'll likely get a long stay visa, but likely keep on heading west, but maybe gain a month or two in French Polynesia before we continue our way westward. And take you guys with us because this is a whole different part of the world for us. Um, it's going to be challenging, not just crossing the ocean, but once we get um, over to these islands and these atolls, um, that's going to be a whole new experience for us. Um, yeah. So it's going to be an adventure. Yeah. And that's one thing that we thrive on and haven't had um, for a while, a while now, yeah. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Like I mean, a real adventure. Yeah, like stepping off into like, the unknown and discomfort that we haven't, you know. Yeah. I guess our content will be taking a little bit of a shift, probably, because um, I think a lot of our time is going to be spent prepping for this upcoming ocean crossing, mm -hmm. so um, even though, you know, the story will be we're heading south, there's going to be a lot of research and things we'll share with you as we learn how to tackle you know, what is a pretty massive undertaking to cross the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. I know it's been done before, but when you're facing stepping off the edge of the cliff, it feels a little different when it's you and your boat and your home. So, uh, yeah, we'll certainly take you with you as we prepare for this. Please send us your questions and we will answer them um, as we embark on... <laughs> Got five months. Clock's ticking. <laughs> yeah, Let's it's go. five months. Something like that. It's November already. Yeah, five months. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else we're supposed to talk about? 
Um. Stand by. I think it's pretty long. <clears throat> um, How do you have to say goodbye? Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bill's done. Um, I'm off. <laughs> and yeah, please um, leave us your comments, uh, questions, everything. We love you, and thank you for supporting us and for watching. Our yep. Like, like, subscribe. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye.